over 400 megs of free memory on our 4K Fire Stick. How? Well, using the brand new TDUK Deploy tool, we can actually disable 40, that's right, 40 built-in Amazon processes so they just cannot run on our device anymore. And if these processes cannot run, then they cannot consume any memory and they cannot use any of your valuable CPU cycles. And that in turn means you get a much more responsive, faster, snappier, 4K Fire Stick. So in this video today, let me show you exactly how you can use the latest version of the Diplo tool. We'll cover some key things like, as you can appreciate, if you do disable so many things from Amazon, then certain things will stop working. Now, key one to mention here is Prime Video. So quickly, if I just start that on my device, we can see it starts, shows us the logo. Now, if I try and play something, click on resume, it's probably gonna work now, but let's have a look. And we can see it just kicks us out again. And that just confirms that because we've disabled certain processes, then that means that Amazon Prime Video cannot run anymore. So I'll show you exactly which processes can cause that to stop. If you don't want to use any of these built-in applications like Prime Video, then you can disable all 40 processes. But if you do want to use Prime Video, but disable everything else, I'll show you exactly how you can do that. So make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Now, the only thing you need to do on your device is just go to your settings, go to My Fire TV and just make sure in developer options, you have both these enabled. Now, one of the key things that's changed from the previous version of this tool is that the newer version does not ask you for any IP address. It makes that connection for you automatically. Now, you will see that prompt asking you that do you allow this application to make an ADB connection? But once you click on that once, you won't see any more prompts after that. I know with the previous version, there were some issues where sometimes the application would crash upon first connection. But as we'll see with the new version, we won't have any issues like that anymore. So now that I've confirmed that ADB debugging is enabled let's press the home key let's now go over to downloader and we're now going to make a connection to my website to download the latest version of this tool now the address for my website is just http colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly forward slash tduk that's me and the numbers 2019 let's type that in and click on go or you can just press the play button on your remote now, when you get to my website, you need to open up the tutorials page. So let's go to the hamburger menu and click on tutorials. And you should then be able to see the latest tutorial. So let's now open that up. And here is the latest version of that tutorial, which is dated the 21st of June. Let's scroll down. And what we're looking for here is the link to the latest version of the Diplo tool. And we can see with the previous version, we were able to disable 30 processes. Now with version two of this program, we can do up to 40. So it is a big upgrade from the previous version. Let's scroll down and here is the link for that Diplo tool. So let's click on that now. Scroll down and click on the green download button. Let's click on that and let's click on install. Now again, we can see, although it says that this is for Fire OS 6, you can actually use it on Fire OS 7 as well, which once again is the latest second generation Fire TV Cube from Amazon. Let's click on done. Let's press the home key. Now, if you did have the older version of the Diplot tool, I do recommend that you uninstall that first before you install this newer version. Okay, let's press and hold the home key. Let's go to applications. Let's go to the bottom of this list by pressing left. There is a new Diplot tool there with the new logo. Let's press the context key on that and select move to front. Okay, let's open that up. Okay, so this is it guys. So straight away that tool says to you, do you want to allow USB debugging? I'm gonna click on this thing here, always allow and click on okay. When you start the application, it will make that connection to your device itself. All you need to do is just allow the ADB prompt. And here we are inside the brand new Diplot tool. Now, a key difference from this version compared to the previous one is as soon as you start this version, it does an automatic scan of your system and shows you which processes are already disabled and which ones are still enabled. And here we can just see guys, if I go down the list, 
Because nothing is ticked at the moment, that means none of these processes are disabled. Let's keep going down. Just to show you that we have 40 processes that we can disable if we want to. But for lots of you who just use your Fire Stick to sideload applications and just use it as a streaming device, you can pretty much disable everything. Okay, so let's go to the top of the list. Let me just show you how the check works. So let's say, for example, I'm gonna disable the first three. So I'm gonna click on this, click on this, and click on this. Now, as soon as you make any changes, if you want to apply those changes, you need to go to the top here and click on the play button. Let's click on that now. And just like that, this now enters in the ADB commands to disable those three processes for you. And when the process finishes, it uses the command PM list packages minus D. And that command just says, show me all of the disabled packages on my Fire Stick. And here we can just confirm that we have three things disabled. Okay, let's back out of this. Let's now exit this application. Just so I can show you the new functionality compared to version one of this. So let's say for example, we've left our device like this for a couple of days, everything is working great. We now want to disable more things. Okay, so we go back into the application. We can see the application connects itself and we can see straight away the device has detected that we have three things already disabled. So definitely give a thumbs up for that guys, because I know with the previous version, you have to start the application and press the play button for it to do the scan. But with the new one, it does a scan for you automatically. Okay, so as I mentioned before about Prime Video, now in my testing, I found that these three processes here, the device messaging, device messaging SDK and the SDK library, these three are the ones that actually break Prime Video. So if you do want to continue using Prime Video, leave these three as unticked. But let's carry on ticking, so let's tick this one, this one. Now, quick tip here guys, if you do want to disable everything because you don't care about any of the built-in Amazon services, you can just go to the top here, click on this checkbox and this either ticks everything for you or if you tick it again, it unticks everything for you. So in this example now, I'm gonna tick everything, go down in the list, but because I still want to use Prime Video, I'm going to leave these three as unticked. Let's just go down just to confirm. So everything is now ticked. So when I press the play button on the top right, it should go through and disable all of these things for me. This, for example, down here is the free time application. So if you want to use that, make sure you don't untick this. And this one down here is the game circle application. So again, if you are using your Amazon Fire Stick to synchronize your game scores, don't leave this ticked. But in my example, I'm gonna tick all of those and just make sure that I have these three unticked for Amazon Prime Video. Let's now click the play button. And this now goes through and disables all of those things for me. And just while we're waiting for this, guys, if you are enjoying these kind of videos, if you want to see more tutorials for the 4K Fire Stick or the second generation Fire TV Cube or the Nvidia Shield Pro, or really any of these Android devices, then please do like this video and also think about subscribing and joining my channel. Thank you. Okay, we can see now all those processes are disabled. Let's press the back button again. Back out to exit from this application. Let's just do a last test now. So what happens when I open this up? Because we wanna make sure this can identify all of those things that are disabled and also show us the things that are still enabled. Let's open that up. That connects straight away. There's the scan there. And we can see it's left those three things enabled and everything else it can identify has been disabled. Okay, let's back out of this. Now before I test Amazon Prime Video, I'm going to reboot the device. So the easiest way to reboot the device is just press the play and the select button together for six seconds. So there we go, one, two, three, four, five. And there we go, that's now rebooting. And let me just take this opportunity to give a massive thanks to all of the new members on my channel. Your support really does mean a lot. And if any of you guys want to sign up, I'm doing a special promotion for the first 25 members of my channel, whereby all of you will be able to join my private chat group. And in this chat group, we can talk about stuff, we can provide support to each other, and we can also share our APKs. So some of those applications, some of those toolboxes I'm working on, you guys can get early access to them. So if if that sounds of interest to you, do have a look out for the join button. Thank you. Okay, so my device is now rebooted. Let's open up the tool one more time just to make sure that the things that we've disabled, do they remain disabled after a device restart? So let's open up the tool. That goes straight away. It does the scan and there we can see it guys. All of the things that were ticked before are still ticked, which means they cannot run on your device, which in turn means your device should perform much better. Okay, let's back out of this. Okay, let's now test Prime Video. Let's open that up. Let's see if that still works. Let's choose that thing that we chose before. 
click on play and is that still going to work even though we've disabled 36 processes on our device and that's working absolutely fine guys so it just shows you that you can disable pretty much everything else but still leave the functionality that you want on your device okay so we have three things left number one what happens if the tool can't connect to your device number two what if you want to undo some processes because you've discovered that something is not working anymore and lastly how do you completely undo what the develop tool does for your device okay so for the first one so let's say for example you try to open up the tool on your device and it cannot connect well the easiest fix for that is just go over to your settings go to MiFi TV go to developer options now if you turn this off give that maybe five seconds and then turn that back on because over time sometimes this process that handles ADB debugging can get clogged up or can get stuck and the easiest way to fix that is just turn off ADB debugging for a couple of seconds and then turn it back on once you turn it back on let's try the tool again and this time as soon as the tool starts it should then make the ADB connection for you okay that's the first issue Next up, let's say, for example, you've noticed that maybe an application on your device or something that was working before is not working anymore. How can you undo that? Well, the easiest way to do that is if you go through the list here, let's say, for example, I know certain third party applications may use the WebView service. And if that's an issue on your device, just find that in the list, untick it, go back to the top. Oh, and just for argument's sake, let's say you've noticed that the music application is also not working. So let's also untick that. So we've basically unticked two things that were previously ticked before. Once you've done that, let's go back to the top and let's click on the play button to apply that change. Okay, we can see those two things are now enabled. Let's press the back button. Now we can see we have this one, which is now enabled before it was disabled. And go further down, we also enable the web view one. There it is. Let's back out of that. You can now test your application, make sure it's working. If it's still not working, you can go back into here. Once again, we can see when it does a scan, the things that we previously enabled are still enabled. And you can basically then enable something else. There may be a slight trial and error process depending on which application you're trying to get working. But really, guys, for most of you and myself included, I've disabled everything. And because I don't really use Prime Video, I can carry on using my device without any issues whatsoever. But at the same time, my device is now so much more responsive, so much more snappier than before. Okay, so the last thing, let's say you want to completely undo what the tool has done. So for that, we can go right to the top. Let's click on this box here. That ticks everything. Let's click on it again, because we want to untick everything, which basically means re-enable all of those 40 processes again. Okay, so everything is now unticked. Let's press the play button. And there we are. This now slowly goes through and re-enables all of those built-in Amazon processes. Now, some of you may prefer to do it in this fashion where you leave everything enabled first, then you go into this application, maybe disable five things, apply the change, back out, then test all of your favorite applications, all of your third party applications, make sure everything is working great, maybe reboot your device as well. Once you can confirm that everything is working great with those five things disabled, you can then go back into this application, disable another five things, and then repeat the process just to make sure that all of the stuff that you normally do on your device is not affected by these things that you're now disabling. Let's back out of that, back again. Let's now go back into the application just to make sure that when it does the scan, it can now confirm that everything is still enabled for you. So let's open that up. And just like that, we can now see all of these things are still enabled. So that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. Let me also give a big thanks to Troy Point, who showed version one of this tool to all of his followers. So many thanks to him for showing support. If you guys did like this video, then do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, then you know what to do, guys. So many thanks for your support. Many thanks for your likes and shares. And I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.